Among the keywords found in the classroom fanfiction were third-person plural pronouns, we, our, us. This was a reflection of the fact that classroom fanfiction was written by multiple authors and conveyed multiple perspectives, and thus plural pronouns were common. Certain character names were also keywords, including several dwarves who were not as commonly referenced in the online fanfiction. In addition, keywords included reference to a number of different beings found in Middle-earth, including dwarves, goblins, wizards, and elves. In contrast, the negative keywords, the words that were particularly uncommon in my students' fanfiction compared to the online fanfiction, included third-person singular pronouns, she, her, his, him, kinship terms, character names, and contracted forms. Taken together, these negative keywords pointed to a difference in character focus, including a focus on individual characters, including an original female character only found in the Hobbit films and not in the novel, a greater emphasis on family or family relationships, and more reference to certain elves as opposed to dwarves. However, most notably, the contracted forms, when investigated in the corpus, typically occurred in dialogue, revealing that classroom fanfiction, perhaps because of the assignment focus on character perspective, had much less dialogue than the online fanfiction. A follow-up interview with a focus group of fans and non-fans in one particularly eager group who called themselves the Dream Team also pointed to another major difference between the classroom fanfiction and the online fanfiction. According to one student, B, fanfics that get really popular, they kind of answer to some kind of fantasy that people have about the characters, or something they really want to explore, or they create an alternate universe. We didn't have anything like that, really. I mean, I think ours was very kind of very much like the book in a way. So maybe it wasn't as exciting as some other fan fiction because it wasn't innovating in that way. We were trying to make it look like it could actually be a part of the book. So I think that's the difference as well between what we did and we planned and what's on fan fiction forums. In other words, the instructions for the classroom fan fiction did not allow students to be quite as innovative as actual fan fiction. This led to the second fanfiction project, A Study in Sherlock. Based on input from students, we moved from The Hobbit to the Sherlock Holmes stories and gave students more options to be innovative. Because the Sherlock Holmes stories were mysteries, they were all required to follow the genre of detective fiction and to have Sherlock Holmes solve a mystery. The fanfiction was still to be written collaboratively in groups of three to six, but students were encouraged to be more innovative. They could tell a new mystery in the original universe of the story, Victorian London, or they could tell a new mystery or retell an old one in an entirely different alternate universe. In preparation, students participated in in-class fanfiction writing workshops and were assigned to read examples of Sherlock Holmes fanfiction in addition to several actual Sherlock Holmes stories. The resulting 16 pieces of fanfiction stories were on average 5,726 words long. Ten were published to private blogs, and six were published to the Fanfiction Archives Archive of Our Own or fanfiction.net, with the hope of perhaps eliciting feedback and responses from actual online fans. Innovation in the stories took several forms. There were several set in Sweden, including this one, The Hound of the Northern Lights, which was a retelling of the Sherlock Holmes mystery, The Hound of the Baskervilles, but was set in northern Sweden. Students collaborated to find a way to Swedify the story, changing characters' names. For example, the Baskervilles became the Beskostroms, but also imagining ways two Englishmen like Sherlock Holmes and John Watson would make sense of Swedish customs and behavior as they went about solving a mystery far north inside the Arctic Circle.